Today we are going to go over four common pond, um, pond problems and hopefully give you some tools um, and resources to kind of work through those. So just quickly before we get too far into it, how many managers have had to deal with a pond problem in the properties that you manage? Okay, so yeah, so pretty much most of the hands went up there. So hopefully this will be some useful information for you. Um, why do we talk about ponds? That's pretty much it right there. I mean, they're, they're, they're not going away. All new developments, new subdivisions will have some sort of pond, dry pond, wet pond, bioretention, whatever it may be. Uh, these things aren't going away. Um, they're they're going to be, if you don't manage one now, you will, and you stay a manager, you're going to manage a pond eventually. So uh, best to probably just become familiar with some of the basics, um, basic problems and things that come up and we, that, that have to be dealt with. Um, with ponds. And these are sort of just an outline of the four things we're going to talk about. Um, problems with invasive plants, invasive vegetation, erosion, and uh, turf-related problems. Leaks, and then problems associated with uh, wildlife. And one of the things I'm going to kind of hammer home, you'll probably hear me use the term uh, specialized contractor a lot in this talk. That's one thing we want to really stress. As, at Dragonfly, we consider ourselves a specialized pond uh, company. We're not a landscaper. So we encourage you when you're working with your ponds to, to um, call on a, a specialized contractor to help you deal with uh, uh, pond issues. You know, um, I know there's a lot of, of landscapers that are kind of easing into the business. And um, that's great. Um, just encourage you to ask questions you know, about their background and experience. Um, and, and see how much experience they have actually actually working with ponds. No knock on landscapers, they're great at landscaping. We couldn't do the la landscaping like they do it, and we feel you know, the same is true for ponds. So that's kind of something that's gonna be a recurring theme in the talk. Um, so invasive plants, uh, they occur in ponds. It's a, it's a common thing. Um, this is a pond in Durham before we took on management. Uh, it, has, it has algae and duckweed and some other things in there. Um, not only does it look bad, but if your pond looked like this, it would probably fail your annual inspection. So your, your, your engineer, uh, Chris from Criterion, would come in and say, you've got to get this under control before we can um, certify your pond. So when you get in this kind of situation, just consider, you know, you should really consider bringing in a specialized contractor. At Dragonfly, we have our, our uh, aquatic applicators license, so we're, we're licensed to apply pesticides around ponds. Our guys are all, all trained in that. They're also trained in identifying um, the types of nuisance vegetation you have and what sorts of products to use to, to control that. J uh, on Monday, uh, down in Holly Springs, I was talking to a guy from the town of Holly Springs, a, a, a story about bringing in you know, inexperienced people uh, to work on ponds. They, they had this great little wetland near the um, town hall in Holly Springs and uh, installed plantings, flowering plants, really nice little focal point uh, pond there by the town hall. And they, somebody made a decision that the Parks and Rec people, they were going to be the pond people for the town. So, okay, Parks and Rec, you're in charge of ponds. Get after it. And so Parks and Rec goes out to the pond, and uh, they, they, they're not trained. They're not experienced. They don't really know what they're looking at. They say, well, this is supposed to be a pond. You know, these plants, these plants aren't supposed to be here. So what happens? Well, they break out the herbicide, round up, and just torch the whole thing. They kill all the plants. and. Uh, yeah, it, it was a problem. It cost the town money. Um, it, was, uh, it was a problem. So, so those sorts of things are, are avoidable. You know, our guys, uh, you know, they know kind of what they're, they're looking for. That's not something you'd run into. Um, but uh, that was down in Holly Springs. Uh, this is, so this is in Wilmington. Um, this one, again, I think the, I believe the maintenance guy or the landscaper was in charge of maintaining this pond. And, they, they, they obviously didn't communicate to upper management that this erosion was starting to occur and it got, got to be pretty bad, eventually had a pretty bad blowout. And this is going right down the hill into the pond, so all the sediment's going into the pond and you're gonna, you know, when that happens, what are you doing? Well, you're, you're speeding up your, your, um, your uh, it's gonna make you have to dredge sooner. So this is important, um, having somebody out there that knows what they're looking at and is documenting these sorts of things so they can be caught early and, and repaired so they don't get to this, um, to this stage. But they can be fixed. We, we did a fix out there. We fixed the channel and brought in some rock and, um, and things like that. And, and now we, 
we, we manage this pond down in, in Wilmington. So another problem, problem with ponds is that they can develop leaks. Um, they can, they, they develop leaks. Uh, they, if, if they're not, whoop, got a wild thumb there. Uh, mainly due to problems in construction. Um, if certain things aren't installed properly, the ponds can develop leaks and have low water level. Well, if you have a leaking pond, again, that's, that's going to, um, in almost all cases, it's going to prevent you from passing your annual inspection, your annual certification. So it's important, again, like all these things, to have somebody out there with a good trained eye so that you can catch this stuff early. Our guys are, are trained to sort of identify the signs of a low water level when they're out doing one of our routine maintenance visits. They, they're, they're looking at the pond going, okay, that, that pond is low. Let me go look at these two or three things that might be causing it. So right there in that one visit, we're kind of already ahead of the game. Not only do we notify you that your pond is leaking, but we, we say, you know, here's where we think it's leaking. Or maybe the valve is just open and we can address it like that. So, so catch these things early um, and have somebody out there that, you know, when, when it does come time to, to address a leak, bring somebody out there that's got experience in, in doing that. Uh, this is a, a pond in, uh, is this Holly Springs again, or maybe Cary? But this view is, uh, so that's looking underneath an outlet pipe towards the back of the dam. This was not compacted properly uh, on the bottom of that pipe. And this is one of the most severe ones that I'd ever seen. It's, yeah, it piped in along the whole length of that pipe, about 80 feet. And all that soil, that, that big hole is just soil loss that occurred from hydrostatic pressure pushing through there. So. When you get to this point, you get to be, it gets to be an expensive repair. Um, you're getting in there, having to do some excavation, bringing in concrete flowable fill type material to get that fixed. It, it can be fixed, but again, best to go with somebody that, that's experienced in doing these sorts of repairs. Um, just another shot of that fix. We excavated around the pipe. This one was, we had to pump in some uh, flowable fill from a Across the way, it was a pretty good distance to get it in there, but we, we backfilled all that void space with essentially flowable concrete. And again, a typical repair for a leaking pond is going to involve excavation and then, in most cases, bringing concrete in. So, this was a job in Mebbin from a couple years ago, um, similar type situation. Okay, so now we're going to talk about problem number four is wildlife. Uh, the, uh, so this is a picture from a site in Durham. This is one of the first projects I think I worked on with Mick in 2008. This is when we were ecological solutions. I don't know if anybody remembers those days. But uh, anyway, this is a pond in Durham. The maintenance guy or the landscaper was in charge of maintaining the ponds again. And you know, he, didn't, he said everything looks great. But I think he may have overlooked something. Does anybody see anything in this picture that looks a little odd? Yeah, so this went on for a long time. This is, beaver da this is a beaver dam on this on this riser. Underneath all that debris is a device very similar to this. Um, so he's covered it up. He went to town on it. I mean, he, he was there. This went on for this. Didn't happen overnight. Um, so so that, that took a long time. And it, it was basically due to not having a good trained set of eyes on this pond on a regular basis. The, in an effort to maybe save money, they had just their maintenance guy out there. Caused a lot of problems. This ended up being a pretty expensive fix to get this cleaned up. Um, but now we're out there routinely, and uh, things are still looking pretty good. Unfortunately, it's adjacent to a natural wetland area. We were talking a little bit about beavers before. They're, they're going to be close by. It's, it's, it's sort of an ongoing thing you have to sort of plan for and budget for. It's really, in some cases, it's really hard to totally eradicate them if they're natural habitats right next to your pond. So it's one of those things. But uh, same thing with uh, muskrats. Muskrats, we're t one of the trappers that we work with and we've seen with our own accounts in Cary, it seems like muskrats are rampant. Um, the ponds that we manage out there, several of them have this sort of damage going on where they, the muskrats will burrow into the bank and then when the pond level comes up, it can collapse those burrows and you start, the banks will start to fall away into the pond. Not a huge issue on the, on the um, on the non-dam areas, but on the dam, this can become a problem. They can, they can burrow all the way through the dam, and if you get the water that can pipe through those burrows, it'll, you can eventually have dam failure. Then you're looking at a really costly repair. So having somebody out there that knows what a muskrat activity looks like, you got to get a trapper in place. Um, you, can get this, you can get this erosion repaired, but if you just come in and repair this erosion and don't address the muskrat issue, 
you'll be, you'll be right back here within a few months. So uh, everyone's favorite geese. Um, geese are just messy. Uh, they're, they're, they're damaged plants and they, you know, you can see they're just, they're just kind of a mess. They're, they're sort of a tough one to, to deal with. There's not a real easy thing that's, if you do this, the geese will be gone. Um, they, dogs can work. The, the dog solution is, is okay. It tends to be something that you have to do for a longer period of time. So you may bring in, um, is anybody, is it, are people familiar with that use of dogs to, so they have services, Goose Masters and, uh, is one of them, where they have trained dogs, Labradors or Border Collies that will, they'll come to the pond and basically release the dogs um, over the course of time to basically spook the geese and they, and they just sort of randomize it and do it at all kinds of different times. So eventually the geese will associate that pond with predators, dogs. And it works, eventually the geese will go away, but eventually new geese will find the pond and you have to do the dogs again. So dogs can be a, a, an okay issue. The best thing that we like to recommend is a nice vegetative buffer around the pond. This is a pond in Durham. Uh, I wish Mick would have uh, put a, a before picture here, but you can see this, this vegetation around the edge here. A good continuous buffer like that is a pretty good deterrent for geese. They don't like to not be able to just go straight up in, in and out of the pond. And, and, and so when you put this, when you have vegetation around the edge like that, um, geese are going to be less likely to, to occupy this pond. Um, they can't see predators and things when they have that vegetation. So it takes a couple years to establish, but um, this is probably your best bet long term if you have a goose problem get a vegetative buffer going. Um, so just some tips to avoid problems for your newer subdivisions. We've worked with some managers in the past where it's been helpful to have us or, or an inspecting engineer be involved in the turnover process. Don't rely on the municipalities. Um, I'm sure some of you have been burned by that. As soon as it's turned over, you figure your first annual inspection comes up and you find out that you have to do five or $10,000 worth of repairs. The municip municipalities don't have a great process in all cases. So get a third party in there. You might be able to find some punch list items that the developer will, will be able to take care of before it's turned over and becomes the HOA's problem. Um, and then like I said at the beginning, just hire specialized contractors. Work, use pond people for your pond stuff and things will go more smoothly. One of the things that we really like about our service that we provide is we give regular inspection reports with photographs after each of our maintenance service visits. So it's just a really good communication to tool. You'll know right after we've been there, pictures of potential problems, what we did, when we were there, things like that. Uh, and then another thing we like to recommend is a once per year walkthrough of the site. So get with your contractor, walk the site, take a look at the ponds, maybe get a plan for next year. Uh, talk about options, maybe a fountain, aeration, some enhancements or beautification, things like that. Uh, do that once a year. So I know everybody gets busy, but set aside some time to do it when you're not busy. And again, your, your, pond, um, your pond issues will, will tend to go much more smoothly. And you can email Mick if you have any questions. No, you can email me as well. I'm Tom at dragonflypondworks.com. I have cards, and so if anybody um, needs to get in touch with me, I can get you a card. But um, does anybody have any questions? The question was, is there a better time of the year for the walkthrough? Um, I would say in the late spring, early summer. I would say late summer, but I know managers are really busy in September and October, so that's probably not going to be a good time. Uh, once things are started actively growing is usually a good time to take a look at the ponds. May would be a good time, early June, something like that. The question was, do we re recommend any kind of buffer for ponds that are sort of like down below, so they sort of sit lower below grade? Um, it would have to, I'd have to take a look at that and see, does it have a fence around it? No. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe I could take a look and see. I mean, it, it could work, um, potentially, but just have to see. The question was, uh, we're called Dragonfly Pond Works, so why didn't we talk about um, mosquitoes? Um, we can talk a little bit about it now. Uh, Mick, Mick just changed up this presentation, but yeah, the uh, dragonflies are, are important predators of mosquitoes. Uh, we, we can stock them in ponds. The pond, a pond that looks like this is going to have a lot of dragonflies just occurring naturally. 
Um, they're, they're significant predators of mosquitoes, ticks, and things like that. In certain parts of the country, they call them mosquito hawks. Uh, if you, if you uh, have time to research dragonflies a little bit on the internet, they're pretty amazing. All the uh, cultural significance of them and just how much information there is about dragonflies. They s spend most of their life in the water and just a very short period of their time out in, uh, as winged insects. But uh, good to have dragonflies. They, they occur naturally when you have a nice, healthy, balanced pond. Um, a lot of plants and things like that. If you have a buffer going around your pond, you'll have, you'll have a lot of different types of dragonflies.